wanted to give you guys a little bit of an overview about how to find certain content in our D2L space. I think probably it's the case that many of you have used D2L before, um, but I think every professor and every class is organized slightly differently. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview about how that's going to happen. The very first thing that you're going to, going to want to do after you clicked on our course space is go ahead and click on content. I'm fairly sure it starts off with an overview of where it is, you know, like you sort of say, like, well, click on the getting started module to get started. That seems pretty self-explanatory. And this is really just kind of some giving you some basic information about what kinds of information that you have to have. So one of the, the next thing that you're going to want to do after you sort of you land on the overview, um, you're going to kind of want to start at the top and always work your way down. One thing to keep in mind is that the units actually are time sensitive. So you'll notice that right here on unit two, um, the ancient book, we're not really going to be starting that until this coming Thursday on the 24th. And then we're not going to be starting um, unit three, the book in Byzantium and medieval Europe until August 28th. And so from now, when you click on something like this, you can see an overview of what we're going to be talking about and what's coming up. Um, but you can't actually yet click on anything here. Um, those won't open up until it's actually time for them to be available. Um, the idea is that in some sense, this class is not entirely self-paced. We're all gonna be talking about the same questions and in sort of thinking about the same topics at the same time. So that's gonna really help to facilitate a lot of back and forth and some healthy discussions in VoiceThread, which I'll show you in a minute. So what you'll want to do is start with the, you know, going through and, importantly, printing out the syllabus. You're going to need to read the syllabus very carefully. You want to print it out and have it as a handy reference because it's going to be your sort of guide to how the class is going to run. The other thing that I think is really helpful is that I created a course schedule at a glance. Um, so this has everything that's going to be happening and the dates that it's going to happen um, throughout the entire session. Um, you know, and it's sometimes they're broken, you know, modules can be broken out into like part, you know, like we'll have, we'll spend a few days talking about part A, sometimes we're talking about for, you know, part B, um, although that's not always the case. Um, and so this is just a really nice overview of, you know, what's going to come. Um, and I think this is really important because as I said before, I don't actually open the modules except three at a time, right? So you will only ever add like three at a time. So like right now we have course policies, information in unit one. That's what you need to be focusing your attention on now. You can see what's coming up with unit two and you can have a little bit of an overview of what you'll need to be doing. But again, you won't be able to access that yet. And the same thing with unit three. So you'll have a little bit of an overview at a time. Um, once we get past unit three, then we'll have another three set of modules that open up where again, it's going to be, you only get to do, you know, you're only going to have access necessarily to um, our, our most current thing and what has been in the past. Um, but it does give you just a little bit of an overview of what's, of what's happening and what's going to come. One of the nice things about doing it that way is that we don't have like sort of an inundation of information, but you can also still use the course schedule to figure out what kinds of things are going to be happening in the next few days. Um, so you'll notice that on Wednesday, we have all of the content from unit one and course policies that's going to be due, right? Um, so that's just why you can look it up here. It says on Wednesday, Unit one, course introduction, 21st through 23rd, and that's due. So that's just telling you that you should complete unit one before the end of August 23rd. So if it's midnight um, on a log, you know, August 23rd, like you should really have that done. The next thing that you'll notice on um, Thursday, August 24th, the ancient book unit two becomes available. And scroll down. Um, these are going to be the things that you'll that you'll be able to click on. And you'll notice too that the quiz on the ancient book becomes available and the syllabus quiz from the very first module, that availability ends on the 24th. So you kind of want to be sort of thinking about these things and sort of scrolling through and seeing what's happening through the course schedule. It'll always give you a little bit of the upcoming events. Um, 
Don't use the full schedule because like I say, I only open up modules three at a time and so the full schedule is not actually necessarily going to be something that's useful to you. You're gonna wanna use um, upcoming events and then you're gonna wanna use the schedule that's right here under getting started. And that's something that you um, will refer back to. If there were any changes to the schedule, I would make a note and I would certainly notify everyone um, so that there, there won't be any confusions as well. The other thing that I wanna draw your attention to is the following. If you click on discussions, you'll notice that there is a forum here called course questions. I have it set up such that when you make a post in the course questions forum, I actually get a text message. D2L doesn't allow you to set up text messages, so it like bounces to my email and then I have my email text me. Um, so that, that you know, I get like a lot of information almost immediately about whether there are course questions are happening. Um, the only thing that can be problematic about that is that sometimes it gets a little, if there are lots of questions, um, it can be a little easier for me to, to miss track of, of one. So do feel free to sort of like follow up or sort of bump it up um, with, a, with another post um, if, an, if, you know, if you didn't get a response right away. Um, so the course questions forum is actually, I think, a really important part of how I'm planning on organizing the class. The idea is that if you have a question it is always the case that your very first step should be going to be to go into the course questions forum. You should you are responsible for knowing everything in this forum and you know that the way that that works is that you're going to want to look and see if someone has already asked and that question has already been answered, right? So you always want to go here first. If you look in the course questions forum and you don't see this particular question, please actually post it here rather than emailing me because everyone has access to this forum. So what that means is that then we can sort of have one kind of consolidated space for different kinds of questions. The idea being that if you have a question about something, probably other people do as well. And so it's a really great way for us to be communicating. The other thing is that not only can you post questions in the course questions forum, you are very welcome and in fact encouraged to help your peers out by answering questions in the course questions forum. You know, so if suppose like I'm in the car and I'm driving when someone posts here and you happen to see it before I can actually get back to my computer and, and respond, but you are pretty sure you know the answer, go for it answer that question. The idea is that sort of we are all in this together and the more kind of give and take and the more we can think about each other as valuable resources and sort of like, you know, this kind of course, like we're all in it together mentality, um, I think the more positive your experience with a class is going to be. And so I do encourage students to, rather than emailing me a question, which is of course only going to be available with like a give and take, with me and you, do put it in the course questions forum. Now there's an obvious caveat to that. If you have a question about your grade, for instance, you're like, I, you know, you marked me out for this and I don't think that's fair. That would be the kind of thing where that it makes more sense to have a private conversation between the two of us as opposed to putting something in the course questions for, um, forum. Um, so that would, be, that would be a good reason to email me instead of putting something in the course questions. But for the most part, if you have a question about something, it's it's likely that other people have that similar question too, and so we want to be putting everything in sort of shared resource, like shared spaces. Um, you can always access VoiceThread by going to UA Tools here. However, in some sense, I'm not actually sure that that's going to be what you want to do, except in the case of putting together your final presentation, because for the most part, I want you to stick with content, and you'll notice that everything that you need for a particular module is all going to be available here, right? So these links will become active tomorrow morning. You'll be able to click on them. And so you'll, you know, you'll be able to click on the lectures from within the module. And I think that that can be a little bit um, cleaner because if you go to VoiceThread, what you're going to get is just a list of different lectures um, as they become available. And in some sense, it might be confusing. You might accidentally click on the wrong thing, especially if we're thinking about like, you know, we have a couple of different lectures in, in like the same module, things like that. So I really do encourage students to kind of stick with the content section and always be thinking about working within the module and, and moving your and moving your way through. Um, I think that that is all that I wanted to do with D2L. Um, I'm really looking forward to teaching the class. Um, and yeah, I will see you on the VoiceThread forums.